Hey friends, Sean from Draft Therapy here, and on today's review for you, we're going worldwide. Utopia's Barrel-Aged Worldwide Stout is a 17.3% barrel-aged stout from Dogfish Head Brewery in Milton, Delaware. Worldwide Stout from Dogfish Head is a stout in its own right. Then there's the Barrel-Aged Worldwide Stout, which as you could probably guess is that same Worldwide Stout aged in bourbon barrels. Then, on an entirely new level, we have today's review for you. It's the Utopia's Barrel-Aged Worldwide Stout. Now, originally this was released in 2020. This Worldwide Stout is aged in the barrels that Sam Adams uses for the Utopia's beer, which you may know as the Sam Adams beer that tops out at around 28%. Goes for a couple hundred bucks a bottle. It's got the whole ceramic deal. I don't know about you, but that makes me think that this beer, it sounds pretty enticing. So let's go look at the label. We'll get into a glass. But first, I'd like to thank John over at Sombeer.com and the upcoming Dewey Pod Monster podcast for snagging this beer for me. And my executive producers, Brian Kramer, David Jeffries, Chad Shirk, and Cam Freeman for helping to bring this review to you today. If you'd like to become a producer, help with the channel, or maybe just throw me a couple bucks to buy me a beer, take a look at my Patreon at patreon.drafttherapy.com, where you can get early access to these videos and a few other special perks available only to patrons. Check out the Patreon. You'll be able to find out more about it. So we're going to start from the top here. We got the cap, the dogfish head cap. It looks like kind of like a high voltage cap. It, it's green or like a neon yellow. It has a triangle on it, the dogfish head shark, all that good stuff. So if we look at the bottle itself, on the front, again, we have the dogfish head shark. It says Utopia's barrel aged worldwide stout. Age as well. This is 12 fluid ounces. And on the side here, it looks, what looks to be a smokestack is actually the Utopia's, the Sam Adams Utopia's bottle letting you know that this is indeed, you know, something to do with that Sam Adams bottle. If we turn it to the side here, it says aged in Sam Adams Utopia's barrels. And then it says beer geek info. The experience of drinking Utopia's is often described as ritualistic, rare and often rumored about in the darkest corners of the beer community. This variety of worldwide stout is dark, rich, roasty, and complex. And then it has all the information here on the side. It tells you what kind of glass where to use, which is like a snifter style glass, which of course we'll be using. The serving temp at 55, uh, 55 degrees. It tells you the SRM, how hoppy and how malty it is, and then good food pairings, which we're not going to have any food here, but it has like ribs and, and looks like a chicken, a drumstick and soup. Okay. And then a piece of cake. I'm assuming that's chocolate cake. Then on the other side, it has the government warning. It tells you it's brewed and bottled by Dogfish Head Craft Brewery in Milton, Delaware, uh, you know, and a few other places around that Dogfish has in collaboration with the Boston Beer Company, which you might know as Sam Adams. And then the uh, deposit information. I don't know if this has an actual date on it. Uh, there is a stamp here. It's a yellow stamp, uh, but I don't think that coordinates with any kind of date. I thought I saw like a dark print somewhere on this bottle. But alas, I know that it's from this year. We're going to use a large snifter style glass. We got to break out the handy dandy bottle opener here and uh, we're going to get to going. I love cracking a, a nice bottle, seeing the vapor that comes out of the top. I thought I was smelling something. Let's put a nose on it. Oh, lots of dark. There's like a dark cherry note in there. Maybe a little bit of a chocolate. Go ahead and pour that. I am excited. I'm honestly excited for this. All right, let's pour this. Coming out pretty light out of the out of the bottle itself. Uh, you can see right through the pour. It is a bit, a bit dark, but it's not totally opaque. Being a uh, 12 ounce bottle, roughly, we're not going to get. It's not going to fill this thing up. But we don't really have much of a head here. It's really light, really uh, light bubbles, like you know, big bubbles on it for for being a head. It's not densely packed or anything. Let's go ahead and hold it up to the light here. Very dark. Uh, I don't know if you can see through that, but it looks, I can't, I can't see through it, but I do see that kind of telltale uh, reddish kind of hue on the bottom of the bulb of the glass. Let's go ahead and put a nose on it. Again, getting that kind of dark, rich, there's like a boozy aroma to it. It has a cherry aroma as well. I'm not really picking up on much of the stout kind of characteristics of this, but let's go ahead and Try it out. Cheers. Now we talk about the mouthfeel first, of course, all the time. The mouthfeel, it's really kind of intriguing because when I said we're going to talk about the mouthfeel, when I first like kind of got it, you know, got it in, 
Uh, it had a bit of a kind of a, it had a little bit of a kind of syrupy thickness to it, but then as I swallowed, it really kind of thinned out. It really kind of washed out. It initially has a very thick kind of mouthfeel, syrupy mouthfeel. When you swallow it, it kind of thins out, like I just said, but I needed to take another drink just to make sure. Now let's talk about the flavor here. So I'm taking this little sip and I'm kind of swirling it. And I drink a little and I, and I swallow a little bit more. You're getting a big, well, what I'm getting is a big kind of boozy characteristic throughout the entire um, swallow. It has, like, it leaves a very, uh, when you breathe, you know, when you breathe in your through your mouth after drinking it, you can feel like the air passing over your tongue. But underneath that, it does have a very rich kind of cherry flavor in there. It has a malty flavor in there as well. Uh, I think the booziness kind of almost supersedes, like it kind of, it puts a, it puts like a cover over everything else. So you do get that cherry flavor in there. You get a rich, dark cherry. It's not like a tart cherry. It's just like a deep cherry flavor. Um, and then you're getting a little bit of this maltiness on the finish after you let it sit. You know, this is obviously a sipper. It's over 17%. So after you get that kind of that drink and, and you get that sip in and you let it kind of sit then there after that booziness kind of subsides once you get past that you start to pick up um the, a bit of a chocolatey note to it there is a bit of a, a, a you know roastier malty flavor in there that you don't really pick up too much on the upfront because that booziness kind of pushes all that flavor out but it comes through very sweet uh, at the beginning, you get a really big sweet flavor. That booziness comes through. Now, actually, as I've kind of taken a couple drinks now, a couple sips, I've got a little bit more acclimated to it. The booziness really isn't as strong as it was on those first two kind of drinks. Uh, you know, the initial drink was, you know, when I talk about mouthfeel, there's always that like kind of shock. And I'm always thinking about what that first flavor is. But once you go in for the second one, sometimes you still pick up those initial kind of uh, notes, those kind of tasting notes. And then usually by the third or fourth, it really subsides and you start to be able to pick up a little bit more. And that's the shock of how high the ABV is on this kind of starts to dissipate after that second, that third drink. Uh, so now I feel like I'm getting a little bit more of a, I'm able to kind of look at it or, or taste it from a different kind of perspective, so to speak. But yeah, big cherry notes, um, big, there is still a bit of a, a, a booziness to it, but it's not nearly as bad as it was, like I said before. There is a bit of a chocolatey note that kind of comes a little bit quicker now that I'm, now when I'm swallowing it, it comes, you know, it's a little bit of a cherry, a little bit of a chocolate, a little bit of a dark roasty malt flavor. Uh, so it's, you know, it's kind of, it's evolving. It, it, it's breathing a little bit more. I'm sure some of it's, it's breathing more and my tongue is becoming more accustomed to it, my taste buds. Um, you know, with Utopias itself, the Sam Adams Utopias, it is like, Sam Adams even, you know, they define it as like pushing the envelope towards between spirit and beer. And this one kind of does that in, in, a, in a way. You could still tell it is stout, uh, stout. It still has that kind of those stouty characteristics, but it also has, like I said, you're getting those really big cherry notes. You're getting, you're still getting that booziness, but you're still getting kind of that underlying uh, stouty flavor. And I kind of relate this a little bit to um, the Bell's cherry, the, the dark cherry stout, or I forget what exactly the name is, but the, 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 the cherry stout that Bell's does, they do a barrel aged version of it. And I'm not a big fan of that one because the cherry just is too much. Like it's, it's just, it's, it's not, it doesn't taste like a real kind of cherry, like a real dark cherry, but this actually does have that dark cherry kind of flavor to it. It does taste more natural. Uh, I know that they use like thousands of pounds of cherries and like in the Utopia's stuff. And this one, you, you know, they're using the barrels from it. So you still get that, that, that cherry flavor is definitely still in there, but you also get those stouty characteristics. Definitely a sipper. Uh, definitely like a special, I feel like it's like a special, this is like a special occasion kind of beer. And, and I don't know how it ages. Obviously, it just came out last year, and this is the first time I've been able to try it. I didn't, actually didn't even find it myself, right? Like I said, John from Sambeer and, and Dewey Podmonster found it uh, and picked it up for me. 
So I'm not really sure how it ages, but I would think the cherry probably starts to dissipate a little bit and you start to get more of a boozy characteristic. And I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Like I said, over time, you know, as this is breathing, as it's maybe warming a, a little bit, as my tongue's becoming more acclimated to it, you pick up more of that true taste. So it, you, it's something that you want to sip. You don't obviously 17% over. You're not going to down this. Uh, that's That would be a little bit ridiculous, a little bit excessive if you ask me. Um, but it, it def definitely has that nice kind of flavor to it. And it's a really mellow, chill kind of beer for as high as ABV as it is. I would say this is one to share or one that you're going to crack when it's kind of a one and done. Uh, or, you know, you're just trying to end a night or it's a weekend and, you know, it's been a long day and you just kind of want to relax. I think the upcoming holiday season, you know, Christmas, New Year, um, would be a perfect time to enjoy this. If you're still holding on to this, I know this came out like around late October or mid-November, I think. So if you're still able to find this, this is definitely one to sit on and just crack open for special occasions. It's kind of like 120 minute IPA, you know, it's not something you're going to drink every day. And maybe it's something that you might want to age and just kind of keep notes, mental notes, or write down some notes on how it changes. And it's one of those beers that you can sit on and, and let, you know, let breathe and, and see how it turns out. All right, friends, that has been Utopia's Barrel Age Worldwide Stout from Dogfish Head Brewery. Have you had this beer? Have you had in the Utopias? What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments down below while you're down there. If you like beer, you might want to subscribe and click that bell. I'm here talking about beer twice a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays. It's all for free for viewers just like you. And you might miss your newest favorite, or you might not avoid a clunker if you're not subscribed and getting those notifications. I talk about all types of different beers, so I might talk about some that you like, might talk about some that you wouldn't like. So until next time, I'm Sean from Draft Therapy. Thanks for stopping by. Remember, drink craft beer, support your local breweries. These guys are in Milton, Delaware. And until next time, don't forget to treat yourself to a little draft therapy. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Cheers.